welcome to your bank holiday this morning. We hope you're having a lovely Easter. I know I am because I'm joined by Doyle Roo. It's Doyle been a Roo. long time. It's been a while, hasn't it? They, they, you know, have you missed us, me? They, I have very badly. They've let us play together again because we got a we got like a free gaff. Do you know what a free gaff is? A free, free gaff. Ga free, it's free, like a free, free house, house, right? Because the adults are away, right? Yeah. Phil and Holly are away. Uh, our favourite aunt and uncle, Alison and Dermot, they're away. So we can invite over who we want. We have the, the run of the place. So because of that, I brought you in a performing duck. Oh, yeah, because, you know, who's going to give out to us? We can do what we want. Let's not talk about the duck, Craig, because you know what happened earlier. There was an incident earlier with it. I, we can't go into it now, but maybe on social media it'll appear at yeah. some stage. It'd probably do quite well, actually. The, the duck's in love with Craig, basically. We just got close. It was early. It's yeah. like Holiday Monday. You know how it's it is. It's understandable. <laughs> shall, it's understandable. We start, shall we start talking about this? Uh, it's a busy old show, right? But we're breaking news. We're breaking news because recently uh, we told you about the shocking disappearance of Gary the Gorilla from a garden centre in Lanarkshire. Yes, the eight-foot statue vanished without a trace with CCTV uh, showing an unknown car arrive at the nursery before the thieves unbolted him and carefully packed Gary away into a van. And while there were no leads to begin with, there's been some very, very interesting developments over the past few days. Yeah, eagle-eyed motorists spotted a gorilla matching Gary's description tied to a trailer on the M25 and the M40 near Warwick. So what kind of description do you need? <laughs> Are many of these gorillas <laughs> on motorways? Sorry, serious, serious business. Yes, Sorry. serious. And today we've taken it one step further by tracking down the driver himself, Chris Murray. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Good morning. OK. Good stuff. Uh, quite a shocking tale, this, Chris. Uh, what's your, what's the, the latest on this situation? Well, it started off, really, by me buying a griller off a friend of mine, Peter Jones, thinking it would look good in my garden, which I saved a place for it for the last five years. Coming up the motorway, um, plenty of people popping the horns and waving, and all of a sudden, halfway through the journey, it got a lot of aggressiveness of people and hand signals, and I thought, this is a bit strange. It must be because I'm causing a traffic jam, maybe. So, Chris, and then, you... Obviously, you, when I got back, my stepson... You were obviously accused of stealing this... told me that... <laughs> you were obviously yeah, accused of stealing this gorilla. Stolen. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, and yes, carry on. You were obviously accused of stealing this gorilla. So what did you think when you were travelling down the motorway and everybody was taking pictures of you? Well, I expected it, but the chap I got it off insisted it on being vertical. It's the only way it should travel, he said. So that was how we had to come. And as I said, it, it was good at the start. Everyone was happy. But as, a, as the journey progressed, everyone was quite... Uh, well, they looked a bit fed up, to be honest, as if I'd stolen the gorilla. So, um, obviously, to find when they find out now it's not stolen, it'd be a different uh, situation, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get caught. The size of it in the trailer. I mean, it'd be a ridiculous thing to steal. It's like, I think I got away with this one, lads. No one saw a thing. OK, so to clarify, <laughs> that is not, uh, that is not the, the, the missing gorilla. That is your, your very own gorilla. That's your one. We've no, I've known this gorilla for seven years. Right. So you're tight. Um, well, I've been trying to bite for seven years. What, what, what you want it for? So it's... Well, you know, if you say something you want it, you don't know why, but it's like a woman who loves a handbag. She goes and buys a handbag. She wants it for no reason. Might have a hundred of them. But I thought it would look nice in my garden, in amongst these trees, and I might rent it out for kids' birthday parties, you know, sit on the hand photographs or whatever. You know, I, I hadn't really thought that far ahead. It was a spur of the moment when I first saw it. I thought, I'll have to have that. You know, so that's, that's how it happened. And now I thought I might make a couple of quid out of it on parties. Mm. Yeah. Well, Chris, we hope you enjoy your gorilla and, and at least you're not guilty of any crime. You are a totally innocent man and we're sorry <laughs> that this has happened to you. Yeah. All right? And we hope you really enjoy your gorilla and all the kids enjoy the gorilla. Yeah. But sadly, it's not the news that Reynard nursery owner Andrew Scott wanted and he's joining us now from the garden centre. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. Did you think for a minute there your gorilla had been found? Yes, we had that. Oh, we got a, a tremendous... Uh, well, we, we were so excited uh, when we first got initial pictures coming in. And, yeah, we thought we thought it was Gary. So the uh, first thing we did was phone the police and leave it to them. Um, Andrew, just very slowly look over your right shoulder. I think I've found... <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, that's not him. That's oh, sorry, one of his, I know, but it's, one of his it's many, easy to get one confused. one of his many children. <laughs> it's not an everyday sight, you see. You get confused, wouldn't you? <laughs> 
You will get... So who's that, then? That's one of his children. <laughs> OK, good stuff. And now, are you still hopeful that Gary the Gorilla will be found? Yes, we're more hopeful than ever, because uh, after all that, the, the public interest and in once... Well, basically, you can't move a gorilla at all throughout the UK without people taking an interest now. So, yes, I'm, I'm more convinced than ever that we will get Gary back. Oh. Well, the public have been re-alerted, so very best of luck getting them back. And uh, quite the story, isn't it, Chelsea, eh? Yeah, on a it... bank holiday Monday, people driving around looking for him. And, and you might be putting a reward up, is that right? Yes, we're considering putting a reward up. We'll, I'll speak to the police first just to see the ins and outs of that. But yes, later on this week, I think we will put a reward up just to try to encourage those who are in the know where Gary is. Well, we wish you all the best in getting Gary the gorilla back. Yeah, good luck, Andrew. Just to clarify, Chris is innocent. It's his gorilla. Yes. Yeah? Right. Yes, it's fit. yes, very innocent. OK, good stuff. Have a great Thank bank you. holiday. Thanks so much. I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's completely bonkers. <laughs> and there's a duck over there playing football, the whole thing. I always say it's like the craziest box of chocolates you'll ever open in your life. You just <laughs> never know what you're going to get next. <laughs> uh, it's a busy old show today. It's a very, very special Easter show. And if the Easter bunny has left you with a never-ending supply of chocolate, Phil Vickery is in the kitchen with two delicious ways to make the most of your stash. Good morning, Phil. Good morning to you. Now, do you know what? I, I had kids. My kids are 30 now. There's never any chocolate left over after 11 o'clock on, on Easter morning. Anyway, that, that aside, here we are. So the couple of recipes here, like a really simple chocolate mousse, which is delicious, topped with a little bit of vanilla cream there, and then the brown. Now, I'm not a lover of brownies, if I'm being honest. However, however, this is a lighter version, and I think it's, it's all right. It's tasty. It's good stuff, yeah. That it's, looks... all, it's, it's all right, he says. Right. I'm excited. It's all right, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> because it can always be better. <laughs> Don't sell yourself there, Phil. Oh, all right. <laughs> I love a chocolate mousse, so this better be good. Well, I think that's going right. to be all right. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> Um, now, you might think we're quackers, but we found the world's most talented duck. Yeah. Echo will be showing us some of those excellent tricks later, so make sure you stay tuned for that. <laughs> And if you want to inject some positive energy into your home this spring, feng shui expert Kimberly Gallagher will be sharing the easy ways to give your space a good mood makeover. Morning, Kimberly. How are you? Good morning. I will be sharing tips on how to welcome in the lovely spring energy into your home to create a calm and positive space. I need that in my life, Kimberly. Thank you very much. I cannot wait for that. And um, also on today's show, Julia Bradbury is taking us on another stunning spring walk as she heads on a trip to the River Stour at 10 past 11. After a record-breaking run on the West End, Paul Whitehouse will be telling us about saying farewell to Only Fools and Horses, the musical. That's coming your way at a quarter to 12. And as second-hand shopper soars in popularity, Alexis Conran will be joining us with the online scams you need to be aware of at midday. Also on today's show, do you spend the night tossing and turning and lying awake and getting all stressed with an estimated 23 million Brits struggling with their sleep? That's a lot of people, isn't it? Dr Sara will be sharing her tips for getting some proper shut-eye. Yeah, and she'll also be answering your medical concerns in today's phone-in. Now, who would you like to hear from today, Dr Sara? It's been a long bank holiday weekend, so if you've got a health concern but have been struggling to get hold of a healthcare professional, please do call me, be it, you know, any health problem, any second opinion, you'd like, do you give me a call? I have an issue with the duck I need to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> Might need a vet. <laughs> Honestly, the more to come on that later uh, on. Um, I don't know whose problem it is, me or the duck, but there's definitely an issue there. Uh, give us a call, anything at all, for free on 08000 30 40 44 or download our free This Morning app to get involved. Please do get in touch by 11.15 today and you must be 18 or over.